Hello and welcome to my review on the brand new 2024 12-foot Levitating Reaper from the Home Depot. This animatronic retails for $299 and was a hot commodity during their big drop on July 18th, selling out just days after. Since then, there's been a restock and another sellout, but this is starting to show up in stores. I'm not positive if every Home Depot will receive the Levitating Reaper, though I think likely most will. Taking a look at his features, those include head and jaw movement, as well as six chilling phrases. What seems to be emphasized more, however, is its special lighting components, consisting of an illuminated skull, chest and hands, and seven different color options. Home Depot sure loves their color-changing props as they've incorporated more into their lineup each year, with three in 2024 alone. Now for storage purposes, you'll want to know this clock's in at 65 pounds, with dimensions of 40 by 19, and a height of 25 inches. Pretty manageable compared to some others in Depot's lineup this year, and most of the 12-footers who've come before. As the latest to be a part of that 12-foot roster, it's time to see where our Reaper ranks, so let's open it up and find out. Well, after doing that unboxing and a quick examination of all his parts, I can understand why people keep telling me he is a real pain to put together. Much like the Hovering Witch, which I do have experience in building, that was not an enjoyable experience and I fear the same is going to be said for the next hour or so of me putting this together. But before we get to that, we will take a closer look at some of those components and start with the base. It does separate into two pieces. Up next, we have our five sections of our staff arranged in no particular order. I just decided to go longest to shortest for visual purposes. The only thing I have to say with them is in certain areas, kind of down towards right here, the plastic does get very thin. But setting that down, we'll now take a look at the Reaper himself, starting with the chest. Reminds me a whole lot of the Inferno. You also have a sensor located right there. And then his head, which is extremely reminiscent of the 12 foot skeleton. I believe it's modeled after that with just kind of this volcanic rock texture to it. You also have three pieces of Velcro with one up on the forehead, two on either side, and this will be used to secure the hood. I found with the 15 foot Phantom, which uses this exact same concept. It works well, but if it gets really windy, the hood likely will blow back. So just keep your eye on that. Flipping it around, we can take a look at some of the mechanics, two springs and then a bunch of wires. Wiring and feeding the wires through in a way that they stay concealed is definitely going to be the most interesting part of assembling this prop. Not looking forward to it that much. And the last thing I really wanna discuss is the scythe. Now, you do secure it with a bolt that goes through right here. It is larger than the 12 foot scarecrow scythe from Lowe's. So if you were curious about that, I can confirm it is a bit bigger, not by much, but it still is. There are also some screws here for a better connection to the steel bar that runs through. A few more at the back, and you can definitely tell this is the back side based off this kind of chunk here. But the ones at the front aren't going to be noticed very much, especially at a distance. And even up close, nobody's eyes are going to be drawn to the tiny little screws when you've got this amazing Reaper before you. So just touching on that, it's now time to get building with the 12 foot tall levitating reaper from Home Depot and see just how bad this building experience is going to be.
fear feeds the power of this place. So go ahead and shriek all you want. Don't worry, this is only for eternity. You may attempt to flee, but the darkness shall swallow you whole. If my side doesn't catch you first, with my towering form, you are merely ants in my game of death and destruction. <laughs> Hello, tiny mortal. You think it's a coincidence that our paths should cross? Ah, it never is. You are overdue to follow me into the underworld. I've got a charring bed of coals picked out for you to rest within. Your skeleton will look just like me very soon. <laughs> Well, that assembly was no picnic by any means, but boy, what an unbelievable wow factor you get out of it. This is for sure the quintessential show-stopping piece from Home Depot this year. It took me about 45 minutes to build. It would have gone a lot quicker and a whole lot easier with the second person. For some of their giant props, I don't really think you need anybody else to help, but with this, because of its really wonky weight distribution, it's really helpful to have that person pushing the base when you're getting it up. It's just very awkward, so it will be a major benefit to have at least one, maybe even two people helping you assemble this guy. And before I move on, I know this is a really important question that a lot of people are asking in regards to this Reaper is how to anchor it down and be sure it doesn't tip over. Well, I've actually got 100 pounds on top of its base. Each of these bags are 50 pounds of just sand that I got from Lowe's. They're wrapped in heavy duty contractor bags, then zip tied. I've got about eight of them stored away that I used for last year's haunt and will end up using again this year. They're extremely heavy, so naturally it's a bit difficult, but this thing's not going anywhere. We've had about 30 to 40 mile an hour winds. Where I live in Western North Carolina, we've been getting the sample size little remnants of Hurricane Debbie with some decent winds, nothing out of the ordinary. So this has experienced them and it did just fine. So with 100 pounds, I know that's a lot, you probably don't need that much, but just rather be safe and sorry, it works, no problem. Now you may not have noticed by just being so entranced with this and I can perfectly understand. However, mine does have a very particular issue of it's missing four out of the seven colors that this should be equipped with. It seems I only have red, yellow, and green. I was really looking forward to utilizing the purple setting per my background, and unfortunately, this doesn't have it. So most likely, I will have to return my Reaper and get another one, though it doesn't affect my opinion. I do think this is just a 
circumstantial error, but it is annoying nonetheless. Next up, we'll discuss sound and animation. I like the slow movement. It really is characteristic to this. Also the mandible jaw movement. While a lot of times with animatronics, it looks terrible because this is a skull, it works. The audio does line up a whole lot better than the Knight Dullahan, for example, that I reviewed last video. So just coming from that, I'm very satisfied with the way this looks when it's speaking. And while we're on the topic of that, his tone of voice is extremely unique. As soon as I heard it, it took me back to my Transformers childhood binge watching days, especially the first three movies. This sounds like a Decepticon through and through. You have much to learn, my disciple. The cube was merely a vessel. Funny enough, it totally works for a Reaper. Don't think I'm faulting it because I'm not. The phrases are also really good. The tiny human one, especially for my sister, call her that all the time. And now I get to do it at a 12 foot scale. Now the one problem with his audio is because his phrases and what he represents is such an imposing force. I wish his voice was booming, but it's just not. And there is no speaker jack to create it. So what you'll end up doing is if you don't like how he sounds, you're just gonna have to have your own Reaper voice behind him. I alluded to this earlier before I had him built, but I really do love the volcanic texture and the glow that it shines through is a really nice touch. I do wish that Home Depot would start incorporating remotes to their color changing props. I've heard a lot of people asking for that and I believe in 2025, if they want to constantly pursue and bettering their props, then a remote for their color changing ones would go a long way and certainly please many people. Getting more specific about the settings, you can choose the color of when he's activated by the sensor, which by the way has about an eight foot range. It's not a great sensor, but it's okay. Now I know I whine about the building experience, but please don't let that affect your decision on getting this prop. It is a wonderful piece, will make an excellent addition to your haunt this year, and I have to just applaud Home Depot because they've done a phenomenal job. I hope they keep it up in future. I would love some more levitating floating props. Just, I like how they've spread them out. You know, 2022, we got the witch. 2024, we got the reaper. Next year, we'll probably get the vampire or something. And then maybe in 2026, we get some other flying creature. Another thing this has going for it before I sound off is if you're a Harry Potter fan, probably the closest you're ever going to get to a Dementor. It looks phenomenal from very distant views. Up close, it looks great as well, but if you see this in a distance from the backside specifically, it looks almost uncanny. I can only imagine how cool this would look out in a field somewhere. I'm going to be displaying it in a pretty close quarter yard that I have with a whole lot of people walking around, so they will be able to get up close to it. But if you wanted to display this really far out, that would look just as good, if not better. Thank you guys so much for watching my review on the 12 foot levitating reaper from the Home Depot. I hope you found it helpful. I hope you took a lot away from it. And until next time, I'll see you later. Peace out, bye. Dark.